Hello there again. This is me again, as usual, if you're on this channel. It's clear tonight and it's getting darker, so yeah. And if you've watched my previous video, I went outside, just like I'm going to do now, and tried to polo align and freestyle align again. And that time I found a problem because of telescope slewing. Slewing is when it's just moving away when you polar aligning too far for me to polar align. Because these bolts, if I could uh, possibly think you have a better view, I think that might be good. So, as you can see here, there's two black bolts here. These are called the azimuth bolts here. And there's another one there, but they're the altitude bolts that moves the mount so then the top of it here is facing either downward more or upward more. These ones, the azimuth bolts down here, They move the mount side to side, just like that. And the problem was, my error in my tracking was over five degrees. That's how much these bolts turn the mount. So, as it was over five degrees, I couldn't actually get the star back into frame. So, I found out the problem, and I'm going to fix it tonight. And maybe, if I'm lucky, the moon might be just a bit higher than my house. Because my house obstructs uh, quite a bit of my view. I might, one of the days, go down the garden to see if there's a better spot that's more clear. Most likely there is, but it, it's quite it's quite a um, travel to the back of my garden. Which I wouldn't want to do every night. So I'll try to find somewhere nice and close to the house as well. Apart from that, um, yeah, so the problem was my tracking was I had an error with over 5 degrees. So I'm going to have to try and reduce that error to a, a bit over a few arc minutes or if I'm real lucky and precise with my alignment, I could get arc seconds which would be amazing. So. In my previous video, I was using Super 25 eyepiece, which is nice and wide angle. So it's going to be multiple steps for this. Use the finder scope for getting the star in view. Then I'll use the Super 25mm eyepiece to get the star pretty much centered on the in the field of view. Then, just for more precision, precision, I've got. 10 millimeter eyepiece right here for even more precision and that should get me pretty good at the minute and with that i think it's pretty much i don't really have anything else to talk about yeah i will meet you in a time lapse outside just over there So I'm outside now, I'm pretty sure it's like minus three outside for England that's decently cold, but nothing I can't handle. And um, I'm just gonna set up right now. So, oh no, you can't see my hand, but um, right behind me is the Big Dipper, where then just above that is the North Star. So I'll be pointing my mount to the North Star. All right, now, now to the time lapse. behind me I've um, set up my telescope but as I'm looking around it, it it's just crystal clear it's no clouds whatsoever 
absolutely perfect. So, yeah. closer this time. Every failure I get, I'm always getting that one step closer. It's not about the big leaps and um, fail failures. It's about those small, those really small achievements that eventually build up to something really big. It's like whilst playing rugby, you want to score the try, that's, that's the main goal. But then you've got to get through the ruck. The other teams all going over the ball. You've got to fight back to get the ball back. That and when you do, it's just a small achievement to get there. It's the same with this. I have to. It's getting more precise tracking. Like this time, I was less than a degree, I reckon, off um, the. The error was less than a, than a degree on the azimuth, which is absolutely wonderful. It, when it moved away from the star for me to move it back, it was still in the view of the fine scope, which is absolutely amazing. That came the problem. My hands have done that thing when, when it's so like cold and they just don't work anymore. They just, uh, I, can't, I can't use them, I can't use them. I had to try to use azimuth, screw in the azimuth bolt. And yeah, you can't screw them in with cold hands, even with gloves. The fact is, this one, the left azimuth bolt just won't go any further. It's just stuck. I'm not sure why. I'm probably just gonna take this all apart later or maybe in tomorrow or something, but it just wouldn't go any further. Just simply wouldn't with gloves on and everything. It just wouldn't go any further. It doesn't go any further now. I need to solve that, don't I? Yeah. That is literally the only thing stopping me at the minute. I know how to focus. I know how to track. I know how to align. It's just that one thing that's in the way. It's like when you're at when you're at the at the score line, and you're just one rook away. You're one tackle away from getting through that line and scoring the try. It's just that one thing that's in your way that you've got to get get through. You've got to find a way past that. That's what I'm going to have to do. And on that bombshell, no. Not on the bombshell. Well, at least I did point my telescope at the moon for a little bit to look at the nice little craters on it. It's very nice, actually. Pretty nice looking at the moon, really. I, I could see all the craters and everything. I'll um, probably put a picture on screen of what I captured with my phone without anything, like, holding it. I just used it handheld. I'll probably put it Maybe there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's my image. Um, yeah, I think it's time to end because I've not got much else to say. Yeah, in that case, I will see you in the next video. And I'll probably find a way to solve that. Or 
might be capturing my first thing, which I haven't chosen yet. I'll probably go for Andromeda or something. Something nice and easy. Well, I will see you soon.